What are you on track to make in 2023? 80,000. It's amazing that just a notary can make 80,000 and have a sign and service. As long as you have the patience, the motivation, the why, then yes, of course you can do it. system out with signing agent francis from the great state of nevada how you doing today francis great how are you mark oh good i'm so excited to tell your story like every single one of these stories you're all super inspirational so let's just get right into some inspiration what are you on track to make in 2023 for this year what are you going to finish with we are in october what are we about to finish with this year Eighty thousand. $80,000. When I say you have an $80,000 a year signing agent business, what's that make you feel like? What emotions go through you? It's exciting. It's amazing that just a notary can make 80000 and have a signing service. Francis, I'm so proud of you. And, and I haven't said this yet, but thank you for always inspiring the community. I see you posting in the group, your notary gadget, your income graph, and that's really helping others really know what's possible. So thank you for that. And thank you for taking time out of your day today. This is business hours. And you're like, Mark, I want to inspire the community with, with where I've gone, where I've been to where I am. So let's just dive into it, man. You know, we all have a story that got us to the moment in our careers where we're like, I want to be a signing agent. Take us back with your journey. You're, you're a mother, three kids. Like, take us back and, and just how did we get here? Well, I started this journey broke. <laughs> <laughs> Living paycheck to paycheck. Um, I had I have three boys and they're all into sports. And so as any mother or parent knows, sports is expensive. And so it came to a point where my senior um, was traveling for football and football's not expensive. Registration, equipment, you know, traveling, all of that sorts. Um, it's not it's not cheap. It's it's expensive. And so yeah, we made enough for the bills, but you know, those extra things that we needed for all our boys, you know, the sports and everything, it kind of made a dent in our pocket to where it was, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. Like, do I have enough to, you know, put food on the table or do I send my kid out of state for sports? Like, what do I do? Yeah. It's not necessary, maybe, I guess, um, in that sense to where I have to put food on the table and, you know, send my kid to sports. But as a parent, you you want the best for your kid. So both of them were necessary. Both of them, you know, food on the table and sports were necessary for me. You know, I made the decision on I needed to do something. I needed to make more money. You know, I want the best for my kid. Well, thank you for being vulnerable. You know, what I heard in there is, you know, I started this journey broke. You're pretty up, up front with that, you know, but speak about being broke a little more. Cause I, I think that's very, yeah. especially living paycheck to paycheck. It's stressful. I mean, me and my husband were stressed out. We felt like, you know, we we're failing as parents, you know, we want the best for our kids. We want our kids to have the opportunities that we didn't. So how is it that we have three boys and we can't afford anything and make their and we want to make their future even brighter than what we had, you know, we want, you know, everything for our boys, what we didn't have. So, you know, I'm not going to sit there or we're not going to sit there and be like, OK, we can't we can't do it. You can't go to sports. You know, we got to make something happen. And what I think is beautiful about parents, you know, and, and I'm, I'm a recent parent, my little guy's six. But like it's the sacrifices you make, right? I mean, you know that you, getting giving them what the life you didn't have is going to come at the sacrifice of retirement. It's coming at the sacrifice of your future in 20, 30 years. And it just, it's sad that we have to make that decision, you know, as, as Americans sometimes. It's like, I can either provide for my kids, which I'm going to, but there's a cost for that, right? Instead of while you're paying for the football, you're not putting money away for retirement and you're not catching yeah. up. You know, they say that, you know, 70% of America has no more than $60,000 in retirement and we can't live on $60,000. And, but again, it's, it's, it's putting family before us, which is beautiful, but it, it just stinks that we have to put our, we, we're in situations like that, but then you make a decision like this. And it's like, you have that decision to where, okay, I send him off and maybe just maybe if I send him off that one time out of state, a scout will, you know, will pick him up. Or the decision where it's like, okay, well, I can't send him, 
but what if, what if, you know, there's just that, what if he gets picked up from, you know, a scout and he goes all the way, he gets a scholarship, you know, I did, I couldn't give him that opportunity. So I had to make it, I had to make more money. You know, I had to, you, I had to give him that opportunity. So, you know, I, I looked for something else. Tell about the stress of, of the job that you were in, like we ultimately decided to leave. So I was 16 when I started medical billing um, and I started with my sister. She owned a business and it kind of just fell, fell on my lap. Really, she needed help. You know, I helped her and this is all I knew. Um, I had my son when I was 18. So it was pretty much everything with medical billing up until, you know, the point where I quit. Um, I ended up being a medical billing supervisor uh, when I left my job. And I just felt like collecting money from sick people wasn't my thing. I've done it so long and it gets tiring. And plus, you know, I had a sick mom, she had breast cancer um, and she died of breast cancer. And it's like imagining me collecting money from her while she's sick, it's heartbreaking. You know, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, no, I see the emotion that when you start saying that and what a rough job. It's funny. I never, I, we've had medical billers, you know, in the community, but I never really put it together that sometimes you're collecting money from very sick people. And it's like, Hey, I know you're having a terrible day. So I want to make it a little bit more terrible by asking you for money that you probably don't have. And so I think that was, that's a very enlightening part of a medical biller's job. So thank you for sharing that. And, and sorry for the loss of your mom. It's, um, you know, it's kind of a, a double whammy where it come and kind of circles back at home because you imagine yeah. asking your mom for a hundred bucks while she was dealing. It just seems crazy. So, yeah, I mean, you're on your dying bed, but can I have $60 for an office visit? <laughs> yeah. Can I have, can I have $50 for the medicine that, that might or might not survive you? Like I just, it was not something I wanted to do anymore. Well, I think your story is inspiring because, you know, like you said, to me, it's your story is a story of, of a classic American family where paycheck to paycheck, but a lot of people don't make the change and you did. And, and what I love about you is, is you like, look, I don't want to make the choice between giving my child what he loves. He wants to do football. He wants to go out of state or or not. So I got to figure out something to do. And that's how you, you stumbled upon being a signing agent. So uh, to me, it's an inspirational story of just a mama bear, doing what she has to do for them and, and what is i mean and now you have three three boys right three boys. you were a medical biller at 16 but now mama owns her own business how do they look at you like now wow you know it's like my mom has her own business but you know and they work for me too actually <laughs> they work for me too so it's a plus for them because they get extra money and so they always tell their friends and like my mom has her own notary business you know she has signings you know it's 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 fun you know how's that make you feel break it like, 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 <laughs> it mean, makes like... me feel proud honestly very proud and i feel like they watch me you know they've been through the whole process with me they've seen me on my bad days my good days my exciting days and it's like i I'm a good example for them, you know, so when they get older, they know, you know, how it, how much it takes to run a business, mm -hmm. you know, they, they see it, you know, I don't, I don't want my kids to see me fail. So mm -hmm. that's not a choice for me. But what I love is the moment you just had with me there. Like you said, they are proud. It makes me feel proud to me. That's more important than the money. What you just said is they, they see what mom's doing because they're watching me all the time. And to me, that's more important than money. I know I talk about money because it's like the only the reason people will click on things so they see money. But I wish I could put put out what I really love about this business is what you just shared is a family. It's a family business now. It is your children looking up to you, saying my mom and being proud and telling their friends, my mom owns a signing service. Like that's such an amazing feeling. And to me, that is what this business is about. It's not the money. I mean, yes. Okay. How much money did you make last month? Uh, last month I made 11.4 K $11,000, but I want to see that's not more important than what the family feels about you. And that's beautiful. No, yes. You know what I mean? It, and it's so, funny because the other, um, the other day, my son put on his cleats, my stickers, my logo stickers that say FP mobile notary. And he goes, mom, 
I'm going to promote you today on my cleats. <laughs> and he puts his stickers on his cleats. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, beautiful, it's right? Amazing. It's amazing. To it go is. from a medical biller at 16 to a full blown signing service where you're hiring out other people, would you have ever yeah. thought? I would have never, you know, it wasn't even my intention to even build this business. It was just a side hustle for extra money. And, you know, I saw the potential, I saw the videos, I saw the Facebook, I saw everything. And I'm just like, it's motivating, mm -hmm. honestly, you know, just keep going, keep going your pace and, you know, you'll get there. Oh, I love it. And let's speak about your pace. Cause I think your pace, I think your story is really cool. Cause you're not one of my students who, who started in the middle of the pandemic. You started kind of towards the end of the pandemic. So let's talk, let's segue to your income journey. Cause I think that's just, and, and by the way, thank you for being so vulnerable with everything you just shared. And, and thank you for allowing me to have that moment because I do this because of what you just shared about your family. Like to me, that is the most beautiful part of your journey is how your your son put your logo on his football shoes. Like, mom, he's proud. <laughs> like, how yeah. amazing is that? Like, I find myself getting like teary dyed. Like, it's so beautiful <laughs> that he would do that. Wow, incredible part of your journey. But let's talk about your income journey because I think that's I think that's really cool too and inspirational. So you know, you started end of 2021. How yeah. much money did you make in the first month of of being a notary? Um, 190 dollars. 190 bucks. Now you saw in the Facebook group people at that time, especially people making $15,000, $20,000 and Francis makes 190. Why aren't you seeing that moment as like a failure, not enough? Like walk me through that mindset. I think it's beautiful. You didn't give up after that. I was just warming up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honestly, I was just warming up. I'm like, this is just the beginning. You know, I have a lot of patience and I know it's going to take time. So you know, this is my, you know, I got my commission June 26. So it was just the tip of the month, 190. I was grateful. Honestly, I was grateful. I made $190 and somebody accepted me for a signing through a signing service. <laughs> I so happy. I was happy I made 190. I was grateful that someone trusted me. It's all about perspective. If you can take your, your mindset and just switch it to like gratitude and gratefulness, that will drive you through. Cause I agree with you, girl, you've never been a notary. You've never been a business owner. You make 190 bucks. I'd be like, golly, that is awesome. But too often times, I think you, maybe I'm talking to you watching right now is, you know, you've seen 190 and you see Francis making 11,000 bucks. You see yourself as a failure versus being like, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. You saw other people's inspiration, not like you're not doing well. So that's beautiful. Second month, what did, what did you make in the business? The second month I made 870. Again, you're not burning down the barn, but you're just staying with it, right? It's steady, yeah. It's steady. And I think, again, I hope everyone's getting inspired because, you know, I sometimes I share stories of people making, you know, 5,000 bucks in the first 30 days. And so that's a good story, but this is almost more better because it's a short story of real business building. Like you said, you know, businesses take time. I hope everyone heard her say that, by the way. So, okay, so I wanna to get to the, the, the real, I think inspirational part of your business. What made you in 2022 go, I don't care what everyone else is saying about the interest rates. I know I got in the business during the pandemic, but now rates are rising. What made you stick it out to get to this point where so many other notaries not in the loan signing system, uh, kind of put their hands up. Walk me through your mindset to inspire somebody else. Because like you said, I don't care what everybody says. Mm -hmm. I'm on my own road, so I make my own future. So I'm not playing the victim. <laughs> I'm gonna go market, I'm gonna do what I need to do because I have no choice. This is my livelihood for my family. So if everybody's saying it's low, okay, that's everybody. But for me, I'm going to go out and market when everybody's saying it's low and, you know, call those people and email them, do whatever I need to do because I have no choice. This is me. This is my business. I hope everybody heard that when you are really in control of your thoughts, everything changes, right? When you, yeah. like, I don't listen to other people. So that is someone who's in control of their own thoughts. Right. That is, I make my own future. And I hope everyone gets inspired by that because literally you came in on the tail end of the pandemic, which was great for everybody. And you could have easily folded up and be like, oh, that was a good little run. I made an extra four or five thousand dollars, but you didn't. Let's fast forward to 2023. You're going to have your banner year. You're going to you started your signing service in yes. the highest rates that we've had since 2015. Why is everything working out for you now? 
when interest rates are highest they've been in a long time? How come you're making $11,000 in one month? Talk me through that, because I think this is probably the most inspirational part of your of your story. Well, it's because, you know, I built quality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. And so with my escrow officers, I built that relationship. And because I have such a good relationship with my escrow officers, they refer me even though I don't ask them because they know I do a good job. Um, and then with my signing services, I make sure that, or my signing service, they make sure that, um, you know, all my notaries do a great job. I review the documents and they know how I work, so they trust me. And what I really heard in that is like, I really pride myself in giving them the best service I can give them. I, which which really in turn what I hear is you're more concerned about their business than yours. Well, I mean, they're stressed out, right? Escrow officers are always stressed out. You know, we have a, they have a time frame. Um, they got to close same day. So I make it I make their job and their life easier by, you know, checking the docs before they go uh, before they get sent to the escrow officers. I make it their lives easier by, you know, reviewing the docs with the with the notary to make sure that there are no errors when it comes back. I always, you know, check for scan backs because all my orders require scan backs. And it's because I want everything to be done before it hits their desk because, you know, they've got so much to stress about. I only have my signing service and my notaries to stress about. So, like I said, I want to make their life easier and their job easier. And so if someone was going to say, Interest rates are almost 8%. There is no signings out there. What would you say to them? <laughs> There's so many houses out there and someone's going to buy, someone's going to sell. No one's staying at their house for a hundred years. That's unheard of. And so, you know, there's still a lot out there, you know, and I, I feel like when people say that, it's not that I'm judging. It's just that they're not putting the work in that they should mm, say that louder for the people in the back whatever you put into your business or your work is what you get back and so i mean yeah i quit my nine to five but i put more hours in for my own business but the hours that i put in is what i want to put in it's not that i have to put in yeah, no, and I, I love how you said that because here's the truth: people, people want to get rid of their eight to five for basically an eight to eight. But the difference is, you'll work eight to eight if it's your own, because every day you're working for someone else, you're making them rich, right? Every day you work for yourself, you're making you rich and your family rich. And that's not just in money, by the way. That's also in the children seeing what you're doing, you're taking days yeah. off that you want to take off. But like I said, I mean, you're right. I mean, it, there's business out there right now. Your best month. I'm looking at your graph. If you're like looking what I'm looking at is your best month this year is arguably the highest interest rates have ever been in 2023, but yet you still had a banner month last month. I mean, right. to me, that says everything. It is not slow. You're not putting in the work you should be. And let's talk about this just to inspire someone watching this. It's like, when you say work, it's really just creating relationships. I don't even think that's work. No, that's not work. That's you know, going to networking events with your escrow officer after hours. That's when one of your escrow officers, you know, family member passes away, you check on them, you make sure they eat, you give them a star, but whatever it is, you know, you're there for them. You tell them, hey, you know, do you need a pack? You're moving? I'll help you. Let me know, you know, just that relationship. It just, you know, it makes all the difference. And it's just the freedom, really, the freedom of, you know, of this. It's like, yes, I work so much, you know, in so many hours, but I have more freedom. Does that make sense? I have more freedom to do what I want. And, and I would argue you have more freedom here mentally because it's your business, right? It's, yeah, it does make sense. And no one's ever put it like that. You work more, but have more freedom. And it's not only the freedom to do what you want, but it's like this mental freedom because you're not building someone else's business. You know, it's this freedom of like, I'm building mine. And that is just, uh, yes, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, beautiful. And I think only entrepreneurs would really understand. And so again, I always talk about the money, but it's not the money I should be talking about. It's what you just talked about. It's the mental freedom. It's not really feeling like you're working because you're working on something you own. You're working for something for your family. I love that your boys are working for you. Like it really is everything a business should be teaching them work ethic, right? Watching mom do it so they can emulate that. It's such a really cool story. So, I mean, 
so proud of you, girl. I am so, so proud of you. Now, even knowing your story, it's even more inspiring. So just thank you again for being you. Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate you starting all of this for everybody. You're welcome. It all starts with you. <laughs> You're welcome. And thank you for giving back because that's what these interviews are all about. So let's, speaking of giving back, let's give them your, so I always ask every successful signing agent, what is one tip? Like if your besties, like, look, girl, I know there's a thousand tips on how to be a good signing agent. But if you had to boil it down to like the most impactful one tip you give a signing agent to build their business to your level of success, what would that be? I would say patience. Um, have patience because nothing happens overnight. And if it does, if it happens overnight, it might end tomorrow. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> so patience is one thing. Um, if I didn't have patience, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have my signing service. If I quit the first month, the second month, the third month, you know, also creating those relationships, make sure you create those relationships. Even well, though let, you let's talk about patience real quick. Let's talk about patience because mm -hmm. you're right. If you would have quit after 190 bucks where some people think, Oh, I just spent 500 bucks on the course. I spent 500 bucks. You know, you're, you were down money after your first month. If you would have quit, you would have never been here. And so yeah. where did that come from? Because look, you came from a medical billing. You've been working for somebody else your entire life. Right. So where did that come from to inspire other people? Because I wish every student had your understanding of just, it takes time. So can we, I mean, you know, you've, you said a few times, I don't play victim. Like, where did that all come from to help someone else through it? No, I, I don't. I don't play victim at all. And I, I know that everything starts with me. So, you know, I know the potential. I see people from videos and Facebooks that, that make, you know, all this kind of money. And I'm just like, I know there's potential out there. Wow, that's powerful. And it's the truth that you are where you are in your life because of whatever actions you've taken up to this point. And what I heard there is accountability. And I think maybe the next piece of best advice you can give somebody is accountability because not playing victim is the accountability. And this idea that everything starts with me is the accountability. When you said, uh, what would you say to someone who said there's no business? You'd be like, you're not working hard enough. Again, that's accountability. And so what it sounds like to me is, a combination of accountability and patience has really built your business, like accountability to the effort needed to build your business and then being patient enough for that to actually unfold. Am I close? And, and if I am, talk through that. Yeah. No, you are. I was in the red for a couple months and I'm just like, you know, it'll get better. I know. It well, my mindset was there. Um, I was always thinking positive, never negative. Even if someone said, you know, you're not going to make anything or you're, you know, it's, it's not a good business to get into. It, it didn't matter to me. You know, I knew it was going to get in my mind, in my mind, I knew it was going to get better. Like no one changes my mind. <laughs> no one can change my mind. I, like I said, like my boys are watching me. I have no choice. So it's going to happen one way or another, and I'm going to make it happen. Oh, you know what I love about this conversation is like, you know, when you're wise, when they, they say when you're wise, big, the how is easy. And every single time you have a chance, you keep going back to your boys watching you. When you truly realize your business is bigger than you. And for you, it's not about the money. It's about them realizing what work ethic is. It's about them seeing mom put in eight hour days, 12 hour days and having work ethic. It's about mom showing them that I can do this too. And I think it's beautiful. I hope everybody really puts that why in front of them. Like you have, it's very apparent, boys come first, right? right. And I gotta, I gotta make sure they see a role model and, and you keep, it's so matter of fact, it's like, well, I have no choice. And it wasn't right. about the money. It's like, if you showed your boys, you quit after six months, like they yeah. would think quitting's okay. No, then, yeah, that wasn't a choice. <laughs> That wasn't an option for me. My husband is actually my supporter as well. And it's funny because I always joke with him. He's going to aviation maintenance school. And I tell him, I said, hey, when are you going to be a pilot? Hurry up and be a pilot because I need to go market. And you, you're going to go ahead and give me a ride on your plane. Sure. You guys think so big and it just becomes so natural. Your logic is like, I want to start marketing in other cities. And so, right. but, but what I want, I don't want anyone to like, like, that just fly over their heads like you're thinking that big already and you're already putting into place what's going to happen on the next step you're crushing as an individual signing agent you just open up your signing service oh quick shout out to your signing service what, what's the name 
FP Mobile Notary. FP Mobile Notaries. She hires loan signing system certified students first, you know. Um, yes. And again, thank you so much. This is literally in the middle of her work day. Uh, it's in the evening now, and she probably has signings going on out there. But let's wrap up with this question. You know, I ask all the all you interviewees the same question, and that is, you know, looking back on your journey, right? You're two years in, and and you know, you made 190, you made 870. What would you do different two years ago that you would love to change? What, what do you regret? What would you do different? What is that answer? Uh, let's see. I would have gone out more and marketed um, by nature. I'm an introvert. Um, and so networking, um, talking to people is not my thing. I'd rather just when I come home, I get in my pajamas you know, watch a movie and I'm good. I don't need to talk to people. But, you know, I quickly learned that when you own a business, you got to talk to people, you know, you got to network, you got to put yourself out there. And so I wish I did that sooner. or I learned that sooner rather than later, because I would have probably got a lot more relationships and a lot more business that way. And here's what I tell students who are introverted, because you're introverted doesn't mean you can't be confident. I think a lot of times introverts almost use it as a crutch. It's like, no, you don't like crowds. Cool. But that doesn't mean you can't walk in and tell someone how great you are. Right. And so how did you get through your introvertness to really realize like I can scale this business? Because I had no choice. <laughs> I had no choice. You know, I, I, of course, you know, I, I think about my family and I'm like, I have no choice. I got to do this. I'm not going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to go in there. However, it comes out, it comes out. You know, but I did it and that's all that matters. And I will say it to my face turned blue. All you guys are, you're a change maker. You're a change maker for your family, for the, your boys, for the, the extended family. You're breaking generational curses right now in real time. And that's what you do at that moment. I think a lot of people don't put the business bigger than them, but for those like you, it becomes natural. It wasn't about me, Mark. You just said I had no choice. I didn't know what you were going to say, but I kept on wanting to drill down on because I think that's the powerful part of your journey is you're an introvert, but yet you didn't let that be an excuse for doing it scared. And how you got through the scaredness, the nerves, the anxiety, whatever words you want to use was realizing this signing is not about me. This business is succeeding is not about me. It's about them. And then that's what you put as the motivation to get through this being an introvert. What would you say to an introvert right now who's who's maybe using that as, a, as an excuse of like, I can't get business, nobody's going to use an introvert as a signing agent? What would you say to them? No, it's, it's not true. I mean, there are people that, you know, you come across that they like introverts, they like your personality, they like that you're calm and collected, you know, and some people like, you know, like your personality, like, you know, spontaneous and, you know, out there, but you know, you come across different kinds of people and mm -hmm. it's not one person that you have to be to, you know, satisfy everybody. So you don't need to fake to be someone else. Just be you because you're going to meet people who are like you. You you hit it on the nail. Not everybody loves my energy. Right. And so I'm not going to attract those type of clients. They want someone like Francis, someone who's introverted. But what I loved is this identification of like, I can't be all things to all people. And I think a lot of signing agents think that they're like, well, I should just, well, I, Mark, I talked to 10 realtors. How come all 10 haven't used me? I'm like, cause you know, you cannot connect with all 10. It's just life. But I love how you recognize that. I hope everybody heard that. It's like Francis realizes she goes into five escrow offices. Not every escrow office is going to love her. They're not going to love me, but they're going to love what I provide and what I can help them with. Mm -hmm. So even if they don't like my personality, you know, the services I provide and um, what I satisfy for them as far as, you know, the signings, it actually speaks a little more than my personality. What I love about you is you had such a natural business owner mindset, like you're an entrepreneur, you know, from accountability to effort to realizing you're not going to score 10 out of 10 realtors. And I do. I mean, I understand the fact that when I market and I can market to 20 offices, and only get one escrow officer. I understand that. Yeah. And even though that happens, I keep going because one's going to catch one out of five, one out of 10, one out of 20, one's going to catch, one's going to want my business. 
So, you know, it's not that, okay, well, no one's using me. I'm going to stop. No, it's like I said, there's no, I don't have a choice. <laughs> this business is bigger than you and it's bigger than everybody watching right now. You have to do it for them. They're relying on you to make this work. And again, it's not only the money they're relying on, they're relying on you being a role model. You set in an example. Cause you know, we talked about this 15 minutes ago. It's like, if you would have quit after the, 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 the boom, what would that tell your kids? Like you just, you only do things when, they, when it's easy. Like this business is bigger than that, right? So no, like, yes, it was great when I got in during 2% interest rates, but now it's going up. But that doesn't mean you give up just because it going, it gets tough. doesn't mean you stop. And, and that's why this business is bigger than the money and bigger than you. It's the people relying on you. It's breaking these generational curses and starting to have you save money for retirement, go on those vacations and put away. And Francis, what an amazing conversation. And can I say, when I first started, I literally, I looked on Google, I found you, but I didn't right away purchase your course because for me, introvert, my introvert self was like, um, let me see what else is there. Let me see the videos. You know, I just had to, I had to research you a little bit. So, and I know that's, you know, with my business too, people need to research me, my website, you know, my social media, everything. So yes, I dipped my feet in when I was ready. And that was like maybe two or three months after I kept stalking you. <laughs> I love it. But with every, every business, I think that's the way it is. And so yes, yes it takes time. Girl, God, you are so wise beyond your business years. Is like people, I get these phone calls all the time. Well, Mark, you know, I've been to the realtor, you know, two weeks, but they haven't called me back. And I'm like, well, how long did it take you to buy my course? Three months. I'm like, let me get this straight. It took you three months to buy my course, which is normal but you're frustrated that someone hasn't called you back in two weeks, but you understood that. Like if I need to research something for two or four weeks or five weeks, then it's natural that that person need to do the same thing about me. You are so wise on your business years, beyond your years. It's like you've been doing been business your whole life and it's only been two years. Like girl, you're taking this business to the moon. Accountability effort. And let me ask you this last question on the way out. If you can build this business, if Francis, a mom who was burnt out from her job, a mom who had, was living paycheck to paycheck, a mom who felt like she was failing her kids. If you could build this business, do you think anybody can build this business and why? Of course, of course. As long as you have the patience, the motivation, the why, you know, you want to change your life and, you know, you don't just sit there and play the victim, then yes, of course you can do it. I love it. I love it. Francis, thank you so, so much. What a great conversation. She told me earlier, she's like, Mark, I saw so many of these and now that I'm on one, this is crazy. Girl, you crushed it. Thank you for inspiring. Until next time, I appreciate you. Let's go. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.